If the IPCC does not have solid science to back up its assertions, then upon what does it base its claim that man is responsible for global warming? The governments have placed all, placed all their uh, belief in the IPCC. The IPCC have placed all their faith in the computer models. It's very difficult to create a realistic computer model because the atmosphere and the surface of the earth and the oceans and vegetation systems are all so very complex. And the ways that all of these components of the system interact are so complex. They interact in nonlinear ways, which we really can't predict. One thing changes, which changes something else, which changes something else. There's this cascade of processes. People have to understand that the entire global climate change hysteria is driven by computer models. It is not driven by reality. Reality is not warming up like those models said it would. If the theory of man-caused global warming is based on computer models, we need to know whether these computer models are accurate. Just like fingerprints are used to identify an individual, man-caused global warming has its own unique temperature fingerprint, which is different from naturally caused warming. Dr. Fred Singer, a leading physicist in climatology, provides a comparison of the expected temperature fingerprint of greenhouse warming. We all agree on the methodology. We disagree on the results. The methodology is to compare the patterns of warming the calculated pattern, calculated from climate models, with the pattern that's actually observed, and see if the patterns agree. Those patterns are called fingerprints. See if the fingerprints match. That's the issue. You're looking here at the pattern of warming derived from climate models. Every climate model has roughly the same pattern. This is the fingerprint of greenhouse warming. I'll explain. In the middle, you see the equator. To the left, you see the North Pole. To the right, the South Pole. So this is latitude on the horizontal axis and height on the vertical axis. And what is characteristic of greenhouse warming is that the rate of warming, the warming trend, increases with altitude in the tropical zone and is roughly two times greater, or even more than two times greater, than it is at the surface. This big red blob that you see centered at roughly 10 kilometers, six miles up, in the tropical zone from 30 north to 30, 30 south, that is the characteristic fingerprint of greenhouse warming. Everyone agrees on that. That's in the IPCC report. We agree. Now let me show you the actual observations. No blob, no increase in warming with altitude. In fact, if you see that little blue area over the equator in the middle, that's a slight decrease in the warming trend. In other words, the fingerprint of the observations from weather balloons taken all over the world gives a result which is exactly opposite to that of the greenhouse models. The fingerprints do not agree. They do not match. This means that we can exclude a significant contribution from greenhouse warming, and therefore we must conclude that the warming is mostly natural. Let me touch on what Dr. Singer said again. The atmospheric physics of greenhouse warming demands that warming occur faster at six to 10 miles in altitude in the tropics and at the mid-latitudes. Every climate model has this built into its equations, yet actual atmospheric measurements show the opposite. Therefore, Dr. Singer concludes that greenhouse gases cannot be causing global warming. This information was available to the IPCC when they wrote their report in 2007, yet they refused to include it. To me, this clearly shows an enormous bias by the United Nations IPCC. This discovery means the warming is mostly natural and humans must learn to cope with it if it continues.